The wealth gap between blacks and whites in America seems to be widening. A new report by the Urban Institute shows that whites have 12 times the wealth of blacks and 10 times the wealth of Hispanics. Ivory Johnson, founder of Delancey Wealth Management, joins us once again here on Arise Exchange to talk to us more about the, the details. Ivory, thank you for, uh, for joining us. First, any surprises for you in this report? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, you know, the two things that stand out, obviously, is that um, African Americans are, are more likely to, to have, you know, student loan debt. Uh, and as a consequence, that, you know, dominoes tend to lean on each other and cause, you know, you know a deceleration of wealth uh, as time goes by. So, you know, what are the main drivers here? And we have a chart of, of sort of this wealth gap. You mentioned uh, student debt. What are the key other drivers that you see that has sort of caused this huge discrepancy? Well, I think some of it is, is you know, historical in nature. You know, wealth is really a function of, of income and, and habits, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the, the, the basic tenets of capitalism, which would be, you know, fungible property and access to capital, uh, being paid according to what the free markets are willing to bear, uh, enforcement of contracts, some of these things weren't always available. Um, my parents are actually the first generation that can take advantage of these things and can generate the income. But what they didn't have was the experience in actually managing it. And so the conversation that my father had with me about working hard, going to college to generate more income, I'm having a totally different conversation with my son, which is to say we're talking about how does he, um, you know, the estate plan, uh, you know, what to do with property when he inherits it. Never buy a new car because you lose 30 percent off the lot. These are conversations I didn't have with my father, but they're creating habits for my son. So that I just think it's a matter of time that in a generation or two, you're going to see that gap significantly decline as, as, as the wealth so, management habits right. become so, much more. Ivory, is it then less important that we have this wealth gap and instead focus on opportunity and income gap? I, I think they're both, they're, they're, they're not mutually independent. Um, you know, there, there's an income gap, but again, Think about that. I mean, right now, African Americans are probably the fastest growing demographic for businesses, for creating businesses. Mm -hmm. They don't have the receipts. But when you have a, a significant student debt load, well, that's money that you can't use to buy a house, right? So the equity you would have had in a house that you could have used to start a business isn't there. So I just think it's a function of snowballing um, um, you know, variables. But over time, I think those will start to mitigate, and I think that gap is going gonna, is gonna to narrow. You know, the report also cites sort of the housing crisis. There's no question about it that minorities got hit harder during the housing crisis. Uh, Correct. And, and how important is home ownership then to establishing long-term wealth, and are we seeing a turn in that? Well, we're, we're not seeing a, a turn necessarily, but remember, African Americans were three times as likely to get a subprime loan even though they had the same credit as their so-called lighter counterparts. Mm -hmm. So when that housing market dipped, they got hurt the worst. Again, it's a function of habit, right? So if they, were, if, if they had an elder, elder family member talking to them about, this is what you do when you get a loan, if they had a family member who was you know, well-versed in, in the real estate market, that would not have happened to them. So I think that you know, as real estate rebounds, having been through that experience, they'll be in a much better position to profit. We have about 45 seconds left. When it comes to business ownership, how are we doing in providing minorities better opportunities for business ownership, easier access to credit, easier help across the board in, let's say, mentoring programs? Where are we right now on that? We're, we're doing better. The Urban League is putting together a, a um, program for small business owners. But again, if you don't have the right credit, right, it becomes very difficult to start a business. So, so you know, we're, we're, we're getting better. We don't, African Americans don't have the same receipts. But, you know, if you look at other demographics, they do business within their own communities. That's not always the case with African Americans. That's probably the biggest obstacle. Okay, Ira Johnson, founder of Delancey Wealth Management. We're out of time. Thank you so much. Thank I'll be you. back soon. Toronto Rise Exchange, it's a doggy dog world. The money behind the Westminster Dog Show and the big opportunities that await this year's winners. I'm Andrew Schwartz. Thanks for watching Rise Exchange. We'll see you again tomorrow.